what's up guys welcome back to another tutorial today we're gonna go over this unique rainbow glow effect you can see an example on the effect we're gonna go over right here if you haven't subscribed already make sure you go down and below and subscribe right now i post a lot of tutorials that you guys can learn from and use to up your editing game so if you like tutorials on editing make sure you subscribe all right so let's jump right into after effects so in my example i'm going to use a clip from an nba young boy video made by visuals by luke so once you have your clip you want to duplicate the clip by hovering over the layer and hold pressing ctrl d double click the top layer and find your rotor brush tool that looks like a man with a pencil if you don't know basics of rotor brushing there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube, but the basics are if you left click, the, this green right here is what's going to be selected. And if you hold Alt, you're going to remove this. And the way to change the size of the brush is to hold Control and adjust this right here. So just go frame by frame and rotoscope out your subject, and I'll see you when we're done with that. So once you're happy with your rotoscope, go down here and click the freeze button to lock in your roto brush. Once it's done freezing, you want to hover over your top layer, duplicate it two times again. Now what you want to do is find the fine edges effect and place it on your top clip. Make sure you click the invert button right here. And before you do this, make sure you go back to your composition. So as you can see, we have this white person right here. We want to make sure it's inverted, this button right here. And now you want to find the S cloud psycho plugin which is a plugin by sapphire if you don't have sapphire i'll leave a link to it in the description now you want to change the combine right here to molt and now you you can play with the frequency right here to find the colors that you like i'm going to go for a little bit more colorful vibes i'm going to have mine at 0.31 and now you want to add a levels effect to the top layer as well so you want to play around with the right arrow and put it more to the left and then put the left one more to the right to create more contrast so as you can see the colors stand out a lot more right now so once you're done with this you can add some sapphire glow or deep glow whatever glow that you have i think sapphire glow and deep glow is the best ones to use so just play around with the brightness and the glow width i'm gonna put my glow width to about 50 or 60 and the brightness on 2.5 is fine for now and now you want to change the blending mode of this layer to add if you don't see these arrows right here just click the toggle switches and nodes and you can see it right here. Change the top one to add that has the colors on it. Now you can see it's blended into the person right here. And now to add the flame effect on the background, you want to leave the second layer untouched and go down to the third layer. What you want to make sure to do before that is to copy the cloud cycle effect before and then paste it into the third layer. Now what you want to do is find the turbulent displace effect, drag it to your third clip and you can play around with the amount a little bit. You want the the turbulent displays to just barely stick out of him. I'll leave the size to 100 for now and I'll also have the amount at 100. So now you want to turn up the complexity to get the flame effect. So I think it looks good at about 8 and I'm going to turn down the amount because it looked bigger than I thought. So I'm going to turn it down to about 50-ish. Now what you want to do is go to the beginning of the clip and keyframe the evolution and then go to the end of the clip and turn the evolution up so that it has movement. I'm going to turn my turbulent displace amount down to about 40 because I don't like when it's sticking out too much. Now what you want to do is change the blending mode to add on this layer. So let's see what we have so far. I'm going to mess with the levels just a tiny bit because I thought it was lacking a bit of contrast it looked too dull i'm going to play with the levels a bit to get some more contrast if you move the left one more to the left you can see that it starts to glow a lot more and you get a lot more color shining through but you don't want too much though so i'm gonna have mine like right here let's see how this looks that looks a lot better so as you can see on the person right here there, it has a lot of rough edges and on the side as you can see here. So I'm going to try to play with the roto brush settings a bit to make it look less rough. So I'm going to turn the feather up to about 15 and then change the shift edge to about 80. It all depends on the clip guys, so don't copy the settings exactly, just look what looks best on your clip. So I think that looks, looks pretty good, let's see how it looks. That looks pretty good, you can't see the rough lines too much, it's a little bit more subtle now. So now we're pretty much done, we can just do some final touches to make it look a little bit better. What you want to do is highlight all your layers and pre-compose them. And now what I like to do is add some sapphire flicker. 
but I think it looks really cool with this type of effect. I'm gonna change the amplitude to about 0.5 to get a little bit more of a flicker. Let's see how this looks. That looks pretty dope. And now just just get a little bit more movement and more action in the scene. I'm gonna add some S blur motion and put it on the pre-composed layer. So now you can see that it's kind of blurry, which is what we want. So you can keyframe the from Z distance. I'm gonna have mine right here. And you can just press the U button to bring up the keyframes on your timeline. Go a few frames forward, change the Z distance up a tiny bit, and then go a few more frames forward and then reset it. So when it's at point 0 0.8, you can't see the blur no more, which is what we want at the end. So you can see it's gonna start blurry, then go out a bit and then go back. But you can see on the orange square that it goes in, out, and then in. So let's see how it looks. We can actually turn it up a tiny bit more to get a little bit more of a blurry effect like this. So let's see how this looks. I think it resets a little bit too quick, so I'm gonna just drag the final keyframe to the end and see how this looks. Alright, so I think that looks perfect. So let's see how the final effect looks. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, leave a like and make sure you subscribe for more tutorials. Check out the Instagram in the description and leave a follow, it's gonna help me a lot. And yeah, once again, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.